G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore from the Learn to Paint Academy here with you again. And today we're going to do a, a kind of a different scene of a landscape painting from a photo that I took a few years ago. Let's have a look at the photo. It's a little farm scene and as you can see it was taken on a fairly misty cold day. Okay folks, let's get underway, get busy painting here. We'll do step one of the Moore method of painting which is all about our drawing and getting our big shapes into place. Okay, to get us underway here, I'm just going to take a um, medium-sized flat brush. I'm going to use some water, some of the ultramarine blue here, and some of this alizarin crimson. I'm just going to mix up a dark. I want to keep that paint fairly thin, fairly fluid um, at this stage for our drawing. So don't fuss too much with the mix. I just want a bit of a, a flat, dark tone. A little bit of yellow in there just to stop it getting too dark. Okay, and uh, the key here is, yeah, let's just keep that paint fairly um, thin and fluid. Now, in our drawing, we want to identify where are our big shapes, and um, if we can get those big shapes in, there's usually half a dozen big shapes. If we can get those in, then uh, it's going to make our painting a lot easier here. So I'm going to just run in this sort of like distant, it's almost like a horizon line. It's not really a horizon line, and there's just a row of trees through the back there. Okay, then we've got a couple of bigger trees, which are, we won't place those just yet. Let me just get the um, dam, which runs through to about there, and it runs kind of there. So the dam's you know, quite a, an important part of this painting, because it's kind of the view through the fence to the dam, is the way I'm seeing it. Um, so we'll just pop in those fence posts. And these fence posts are a little bit bigger than how they appear. <laughs> Something of an optical illusion. Um, the fence post runs up to the top of the dam, so we'll just pop it up there. And uh, it runs down to about there. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than what you might have actually thought it was. And then it runs down to the shadow there. And the shadow runs along there. And then there's a supporting beam that runs in there like so. So all we're doing now is just feeling out the big shapes. I don't want you to get caught up in details at this point. Um, the details will come, but what, until we get the actual, um, you know, the, the big shapes in play, actually that needs to come across. So we'll just put that there like that. Um, yeah, until we get those big shapes in place, there's no point worrying about the details. Okay. So there's kind of a, another bit of timber that goes that way. It's actually, it's an old log. We won't worry about that now. I'm not going to put the gate in at this stage because I want to make sure we give ourselves a bit of room there to um, be able to get the block in done. Uh, so we'll come back to the gate. The gate actually sits up in this section in here. Now, as I said, I do want to... Um, brighten this painting up a little so we'll make it a bit more of a sunny day but that tree is it's kind of a shape like that so just pop that in as an indicator then there's a couple of other trees which are a bit smaller so notice the the where they connect to the ground is going to be further up the painting this one's lower down because it's closer to us okay so um we'll just run another tree into there and we'll shape that up in a minute. All right, folks, that brings us to the end of step one. As you can see, it's starting to take shape already. And um, you should know, you know, by the time you've done your first step, it should have a good feel to it and a good look that, you know, you can see that there's a painting there waiting to emerge. Same approach, the same principles will apply uh, if you're working in acrylics, right? So we're now going to do the blocking. So I'm going to take blue and red and we're going to mix up a dark, okay? And maybe even a touch of the yellow ochre, okay, just to get our nice strong dark happening here and again during the blocking we want to keep this paint thin so if you're using acrylics you will want to um, use water the thing you paint down for the blocking okay which is what I'm doing exactly the same here using oils um, I'm using water mixed oils so they thin down with water if you're using traditional oils then of course just use whatever solvent that you use to thin your paint down okay so you can see that's a fairly loose fluid mix. 
So we're going to do it nice and thin. We may have to you know, strengthen up some of our darks later on, but we want to start thin. Okay, so let's just get this post. And this is going to be our, our darkest part of the painting. Our darkest values are going to live in this fence and the shadows in here. Okay, so let's just put them in. Now with our dark, it's often a good idea to, to make them slightly larger um, than what we need them to be because we can always cut our lights over the top as long as you keep this paint thin then the lights can just work in over the top of these darks once this is dried back a little bit and if you paint too thickly at the start then that's not going to be able to be a possibility for you right so heed my warning keep your your drawing and your block in nice and thin okay now these old fence posts here, they're, they're going to be a bit rickety. So you don't have to get a ruler out and paint these perfect. Um, like any farm, you know, they've probably seen better days. So you can see that's our darkest value in this painting. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do all the verticals first. So this is a vertical you know, upright. Then we've got these trees that are verticals as well. And uh, the verticals usually are the darkest part of our landscape painting. Okay. So I'm going to do them all first. So now I'm going to go back in step. I'm going to cool this value down. So I'm pushing it more blue. Okay. And I'm going to introduce a little touch of white to lighten that value. Now that could be too much. We'll find out in a moment. But it just wants to be slightly bluer than what we started with. So we start to set up a recession in, in values. So if I come in here and you can see that's a different tone to here, okay, which is what we want. So we'll just get that in. Now just block everything of these trees in with this new value. Okay. So this is the underlying shadow dark tone that you'll find in, in any tree or any object. It's always going to be a shadow side to it. Okay. Again, you can see I'm, I'm, uh, I've gone over where I probably need to be for that shadow, which is fine. Now I could shift the value even more for these trees coming back further, but I won't. I'll treat them as roughly the same sort of value, um, just for the sake of keeping it uh, simplistic. Okay. But you can see there's a definite jump in value there. This is warmer and stronger in value. And then it's going backwards from there, right? So you should be able to see that value pattern emerging at this stage. Trimming blue. And we'll get some cadmium yellow. If I can get some from there. Okay. So I want to brighten this painting up overall. Um, it's a little bit grey looking in the photo. So I'm going to just push the colours a bit. However, out the back there, we don't want to push those colours too much. At least not initially. We can always brighten them up if we need to. But I'll just keep it fairly muted. That's a fairly muted green mix there, right? So, um, and again, it's a blocking. So we want plenty of water in this mix. And I'm just going to come in. I'm not going to try and finesse anything at this stage. Okay, I've lost my shadow a little bit there, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about the path. I can easily put that path back in later on. Okay. So this is just a green pasture, green field. It's um, country Victoria, and it had been raining a fair bit when we are up there. Okay. Keep trying the, the yellow, cadmium yellow light um, gets overpowered easily, but I'll just persist with putting more of it down. And again, I want that paint to be thin. And let's just see if we can sneak some of it in here. Don't have to be too neat with this blocking 
as I said, we, we put other marks over the top. This is just really getting colour down. So we can easily put with a palette knife or a brush other grasses and things over the top of all this. So don't be too fussy with it at this point. Except for where we've got a hard edge. So part of what makes this painting work is that the fence post here is going to be hard edges, right? Um, the trees and everything in the background are going to be soft edges and the hard edges get our attention they draw the eye to them so that's where we want to be particular through there but the rest of it keep it fairly loose and don't fuss too much Having said that, you can see I've gone over a little bit there. It's okay because we are going to work on those fence posts more. So even if I muck it up, I can still, I've got plenty of opportunities to fix that. And lock that in there. We will warm up all this foreground area soon. It's just an indicator, so when we come back to um, do step three, we'll, we'll remember, okay, that needs to be warmer in there. Okay, now, I'm not gonna do all the embankment at this stage, but what I am gonna do is just get in, I'm gonna shift it from the photo a little bit, I'm gonna make it more of a muddy embankment, so we get a little bit of the red, a little bit of this, what's left of my yellow ochre pile, a bit of white. Okay. Really struggling with the yellow ochre in there. Not to worry. Try some Kevin yellow light. That's getting a bit better. Get a little bit of that purple into parts of it. Okay, we'll take some water because I don't want it to be too thick at this stage. And then let's just run that in there. Create the feeling of a muddy embankment. Okay, folks, well, that's the end of step two. I'm happy with the way this is coming along. It's starting to dry out nicely. One thing I didn't point out, which I will now, just while we're um, having a quick chat, notice the orientation of the, um, of the photo. It's quite panoramic. And notice the orientation of my canvas. Um, it's more squared off in format. So I've had to crop a little bit, and I've taken a little bit out of where the gate's going to go and a bit out of here as well. So just be mindful of that. Don't try and paint everything into if you're using a different format um, canvas to paint on. So just be mindful of that. As it is, I think it's going to work nicely because the focus is really this gate and then the view into that little dam and your eye wandering off into the farm. So I think it's going to work as a nice little painting. But I just wanted to point out that there is a difference. And um, the mistake I see a lot of people make is they try and squeeze it all into a different shape canvas. Don't do that. Just, just crop things out. So I'm going to take a break for now. I'm going to let this dry off fully and then we'll come back and we'll start to detail it up. Now, in terms of step three, where we detail it up, we'll do our sky, which will give us a chance to reshape these big trees and the tree line at the back. So we'll do that, and then we'll put out our, um, our water here, and then we'll work on building up the, the fences and so on, and these main trees. 
there's not a lot to do because we've got our block in working well we've got our big shapes in um, we've got our values established correctly it's got a nice gradient in the green grass there's not a huge amount to do in step three and this is the beauty of the more method of painting um, so let's have a little break and I'll chat to you after that and we'll finish this painting off cheers okay folks welcome back we're now going to do step three of the more method of painting which is where we get our details and our highlights and all the finishing touches in this painting will start to come alive left it overnight it's dried up pretty well and we're ready to go so let's go down to the palette and get underway so the first thing we'll do here today is just work on that sky uh, get that in so we'll take some of that white a little bit of blue and um, my brush is a little bit stiff that's all right mix that up and this wants to be a fairly light value it was an overcast day when uh, i took the photo so keep it a light value okay let me scoop some of that paint up you can see there um, just getting a big chunk of that paint and we'll just start cutting in around here now these trees it's a good opportunity for us to shape up the trees a bit Again with this background row of trees just keep the edges there nice and soft now this all is dried pretty much um, because we used thin paint and the water that was in the mix is dried out so I don't have to worry too much about getting my paint muddied up there and it gives me a good chance then just to reshape any of this foliage that we need to take my time with it break up any of those edges that aren't quite right and so what we want to do is try and using the sky is to create an interesting shape for this tree we don't want to as I've said previously end up with lollipops you know round balls on a stick and we also don't want to end up with any hard edges straight lines anywhere we do get another go at shaping the foliage when we put the highlights on so be aware of that but if you don't get a perfect first go then not a drama break a few little sky holes in those trees there And then I'll come to the dam here. It's going to reflect the water. Uh, the the water is going to reflect the sky. So I'll just drag that down. And we'll put a couple of other reflections into this as well. So you can see that most distant row of trees there. Our first job is to really mix that up. And from there we can find a nice highlight tone for it. So let's get some more white paint. So basically what we need to know is how do we mix that distant row of trees here, this tone here, right? How do we get that tone back? Um, 
well we know it's the blue and the red it's got a purple feel to it and it had a little bit of yellow ochre in it right just to gray it back and my yellow ochre's got a bit dirty so it's probably made it a bit grayer than what it is a little bit more blue to it a little bit more yellow and crimson okay so it's probably something like that but if i put that up there see that's too dark because all we have to do is reduce the value so get a little bit of white into that Now, when you look at that on the palette, that looks too light now. Let's come up and just compare. It's probably just a touch too light, but that's okay because what we're actually going to do is mix up a lighter version of the Ica. So our goal is to get back to this color. Um, and then when we've got to that color, we need to warm it up. So we'll use a little bit of yellow ochre to warm it up and then lighten the value to make it lighter than the original tone. And that should give us a tone then we can use to highlight it. So it doesn't quite look right down there, but let's just come up here and have a look. And that's pretty close, I'd say. Uh, what I will do is I'll switch to a slightly smaller brush just to, for the purposes of getting this on. I'll just lay this paint up. Now I've got it fairly thin, that paint, um, but that's okay. And we'll just start to... going to have the sun coming from this direction over here. So therefore I want to just roll that foliage to that side. Okay. Now again, this is way off in the distance. It's not our main focal point of the painting. So we want this to be subtle and just sit in the background nicely. These trees here now look even more dominant and prominent, don't they? So what we want to do is now do the same sort of thing with them um, and find A, uh, a tone that's going to make those trees appear a bit brighter. Okay, so get our green, our green in there, get a little bit of the cabinet in yellow light, a little pinhead of red, tiniest little pinhead of white in there. Okay, I'm not going to overly mix this if I can avoid doing so. I'm going to have that paint just slightly broken up, and I'm just going to scoop up the paint on the brush like so and let's come to our main tree and what we're going to do is just again assuming the light's coming in from that side so it's going to be catching on the left hand side of the clumps of foliage okay but notice how much more vibrant that green is when I don't clip into that sky um, then right look and feel of a tree but again it's not a focal point so just gonna be mindful that we don't want to overly work it okay now I'm just gonna reduce the value back a little bit on this green a touch of white Got into the uh, sky color a little bit much on that. Diluting my value too much, so I'll just add a little bit more pigment back in. Okay. And I say it in pretty much every project that we do, Oop, too much sky there, um, don't lose all your darks, just won't work without your darks, let's now come in and get our darkest dark here, so 
Ooh, the red, a little bit of the yellow ochre. Definitely not equal amounts, so be mindful of that. A little bit on the blue side, so we've got a touch more red. And a touch more yellow ochre. A little bit more red, I feel. Okay. Just get a little bit of water, that paint's quite thick. And what I want to do now is just strengthen up this uh, fence post. You can see because of the other things that I've painted, I've just lost some of the edges on it. Not that I want to have it perfectly, it's a rickety old fence post, right? It's going to have imperfections in it. So I'd be afraid to leave some of those imperfections in it. So you can see that this dark here is definitely darker than the darks in the tree trunk back there, which is what we want. That helps us set up that pattern of values and creates that depth that we're looking for. My little script line brush here. This one here. A little bit of water on this, so keep this paint a little bit thinner than what we've been painting. Okay, because we're going to put this over wet paint. So I'm just going to load up a little brush there. And come in here, we're going to say, okay, it's going to run from around about there. This is the gate we're doing now. Okay, it's going to run through to about there. It's going to run up to about that high there. And then it runs to about there. So take your time and work it out. You should be able to do a much better job than me because I'm sort of painting side on. So I don't get in the camera of the way. Now you can see how my gate is quite squared off. Remember I was telling you about how it's more of a panoramic um, more panoramic the, the canvas or the photo compared to my canvas. So it's um, But that's okay, we can still make it work. It's just going to look slightly different from the photo, obviously. A couple of hinges on the gate there. And while I've got this brush, there is another fence post out here, which runs around about there. So I might as well pop it in while I'm using a little brush. Telephone pole which sits around about here. There's a whole lot of 
Paris, Paris, St. Denis. Throughout the back there. Now, a couple of things, this is all fairly wet, so um, it might be wise to either let it dry off or use a palette knife. I'm just testing it with a brush to see whether I can get, get it to take. It's not really taking that well. I'll just try it with a palette knife and just see. An awkward spot for me with the camera angle and so on. Same mix and just run it. Have to overdo those highlights there. It's a little bit wonky, struggled to paint that while I'm standing side on, but that's all okay. I'm going to now come in here and just get some brightness happening. We'll use our cadmium yellow light, yellow ochre. Um, there should be some phthalo green in there, some white. Let's just get Phthalo green, but a little bit. I ever did with the sky before I could use this green as an opportunity if I wanted to um, tighten up any of those fence posts and things just by cutting in around them just to create a bit of a feel of muddy section there.
Well, there you go, folks. Um, I'm going to leave it there. There's a fair bit more we could do on this, little details and things, but I think it tells the story of what we were looking for. Um, it's clearly you know, a little farm gate um, with a dam and so on. So I think it's conveying the sort of overall story that we were wanting to with this painting. And it's working reasonably well now, so we'll leave it there. And um, you know, it's, it's at a point now where pretty much anybody at any level of painting could have a go at and do a nice little job. Just be mindful of, as I said, you've got this panoramic photo um, and I've sort of condensed it in. So I've, it's made my gate and everything look a little bit wonky, but you know, you can make adjustments for that. I'm happy with it overall as a little demo and um, it's a bit of fun. It's a nice little landscape scene, which is a bit of fun to do. So I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Have a go at it, let us know how you go. And uh, make sure you drop by uh, Learn to Paint TV, www.learntopainttv. Put the address underneath me here uh, to see all the past episodes of Learn to Paint TV. And if you haven't done so already, come and register for the free course at the Learn to Paint Academy, where we'll teach you the more method of painting. And there's four different painting demonstrations. And I think you'll enjoy it. And again, the link will be underneath me here. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers. <laughs>